Hey everybody, welcome back to Chortle Cast. I'm one of your hosts, Jake, and with me as always, the Stream King, the Far Cry guy, the man who can't get that hawk out of his eye, Steven. What's up, buddy? The purple clad archer dog dad. The purple clad archer dog dad. Uh, Steven, back from Hawaii. We took a brief hiatus. Yes. Um, you've heard a little bit about that if you watched the streams this week. Um, but we're back. We're back in full force. Um, my I last expect week. the channel to just stop without me. Well, it was just unfortunate circumstances. Um, as some of you may know, I, I work uh, part time as a wedding videographer. And so Stephen left the country. Or, well, yeah, I guess technically you're still in America. <laughs> but it feels States. like, yeah, you, you, you left the continental United States. And, uh, I was shooting weddings and so it was just like well we're just gonna we're gonna take a we're gonna take a hiatus I actually ended up taking a trip too, um, to where I was shooting a wedding uh, and Leowson came with me and we ended up like staying the night and right. normally it's uh, normally it's just a, a one night I pop in I do what I got to do and I drive through the night to get home but when Leowson comes with me it's a lot more of a, uh, a, make, like make a yeah. trip out of it. Yeah, I just kind of made a little yeah. trip out of it. So it was, yeah. it was very nice. That's we got fun. to see her folks um, for a little bit and got to see my folks. So it just it turned into a whole a whole weekend event. So there was no time for streaming or any of that fun stuff. But yeah. anyway, that's not what we're here to talk. Well, actually, we are going to talk a little bit about Steven's trip. But this is Shortlecast, the official podcast yeah. of Chortle Games. Where we talk about video games, TV shows, movies, anime, whatever the heck we want to talk about. Uh, we got a good show for you this week. Um, we are going to be talking all about all the stuff we've we've missed um, in our brief week hiatus, we're going to hear about Steven's trip to Hawaii. Um, we're going to talk about Invincible, which is this new uh, comic book TV show that's come out that is uh, really, really good. Um, we're going to catch up on The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We're only going to talk about episode two, though. I mean, we're not going to catch up. We're going to try to we're going to start catching up. We're going to start catching up. Uh, we're going to talk about episode two because Steven has not had time to watch episode three yet. Yeah. Um, but we will, been, uh, uh, busy time since I came back, you have know, a lot of outriders to play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I don't know some people, me personally, when shows like, like even WandaVision, I don't think I really sat down to watch it until like the first three episodes were out. Um, yeah. so I, I, you know, I could understand someone saying I'm going to wait to watch all this. I, stuff, so. I usually wait to opt in till a few episodes are out. Yeah. Uh, so that'll work out for invincible. There you go. Hey, well, and see, Invincible is great. They launched. Uh, well, well, we'll talk about that anyway. We've got a lot of other stuff. We'll talk about Monster Hunter. We're going to talk about Outriders. It's going to be a great time. So uh, let's just jump into it. We're talking about Steven's trip to uh, Hawaii. First, first uh, no oh. Jeremy today. No Jeremy today. Uh, he, but he he actually it's it's been a crazy week. Yeah, uh, honestly, because um, this is why know, we took I was, a hiatus. Is yeah, because it was just I crazy. went to. I went to Hawaii mm -hmm. and Jeremy, you know, has been working out out west, mm -hmm. uh, helping with um, the railroad. The, yeah, the railroad building been the railroad, doing the, That's what doing the gold doing. rush. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it come, come to find out um, the day that I came back. Well, I guess the day after that, Jeremy uh, went home. Uh, he's still working for the for the company, but mm -hmm. he basically was like, hey, can I? Uh, Take a week and go home. <laughs> Can I take a week and go home? And they were just like, hey, let's see if this works long term. So mm. he might be home for good. Uh, but okay. he just got home a few days ago. And so uh, he's been laying low, catching up with Krista and the dogs and his family and stuff. So hopefully we'll see Jeremy next week. Uh, he's just playing a lot of catch up right now. Hanging out with people he hasn't seen in a long time. Kind of like we are. We're, we're playing. It's all about catch up today. That's, that's just yeah. what the whole thing is. So. Um, also I should mention, uh, as you, you may know, if you watch or listen to the podcast, if you listen to the podcast, you probably don't know this, but if you've watched this before, uh, we usually play a game while we record the podcast. And so today we are playing Avengers, Marvel's Avengers. Uh, we probably won't reference it very often, uh, if at all, but, uh, just so you know, that's what you're seeing on your screen. Having uh, to relearn Hawkeye. Steven's, Steven's relearning I'm Hawkeye. For so long. I'm returning to Thor after uh, I've, I've been playing as uh, Captain America for a little while to get him leveled up. And I uh, uh, man, Thor is just unfair how, how is. powerful he is. Everyone agrees that Thor is by far the most powerful character in the game, yeah. which is rightfully so. He should be. Mm -hmm. um, I have no issue with it mm -hmm. uh, as long as the other characters have a reason to exist. Right. 
uh, with Hawkeye, I I feel like there are things I bring to the table that Thor does not. So I'm I'm good with it. Yeah, Thor just destroys everything, and Hawkeye, you know, uh, hurts everything every now and then. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was mean. Uh, Thor actually, I don't know if you heard it, but when we were uh, talking before we started recording, Thor actually said something to Clint, uh, where I didn't catch what Thor said initially. But Hawkeye responded. He was like, uh, thanks. And Thor was like, oh, I'm just saying, I, I admire your courage for going up against enemies that are far more powerful than you. <laughs> <laughs> so love it. Gotta thanks, love it. Thor. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, but anyway. All right. Steven, tell us about your trip to Hawaii. First off, how did this trip come about? Because I, I remember vaguely you telling me about it. And then uh, the next thing I know, you were ha- like y'all were going. So how did this all come about? I feel like you guys so, won a, a contest or something. We, and we really didn't. Um, <laughs> so uh, I mentioned this last year w- mm-hmm. when COVID started, we had, uh, we had planned a trip to New York before mm-hmm. COVID really blew up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then two days after um, everything got real and the toilet paper was sold out off the shelves and everything, right, right. I was watching like something on Facebook, like news on Facebook or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just looked at Anne. I was like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> New York is, I've played Division. I know that New York City is the last place you want to be during a any, global pandemic. Anytime, any kind of, when the, the zombie outbreak happens, whatever, you don't want to be in New York City. New York is the worst place to be for anything, honestly. <laughs> um, so we canceled it, and that was going to be our first, our, our one-year anniversary. Oh, Anna, you are right there. Hey. She's like two feet away from me. Hey. Um, that was going to be our one year anniversary trip um, Mm -hmm. because we've been married for two years now, Mm -hmm. but back then it was going to be our one year anniversary. Um, So we had to cancel that. And so we've been Anna's hobby. Like I've got video games, Mm -hmm. anime, TV, whatever the heck I want to talk about, you know, Mm -hmm. the the whole, whole whole, that's the whole spiel. That's the show. That's, that's what I have. Mm -hmm. Anna has travel. She Mm -hmm. loves to travel. Mm -hmm. Her favorite show is amazing race uh, because she loves getting to see, um, all the different places that they go. She's auditioned to be on Amazing Race like two or three times. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but but she loves to travel. That's like her hobby. So we've been kind of going crazy with COVID, <laughs> making it to where to you can't because because we've tried. I feel like so many times to make it work, mm-hmm. and it just hasn't. Right. And so finally, uh, we decided we were going to plan a trip to Hawaii that was just real chill. We weren't going to let ourselves be affected by uh, not being able to do like super big things. Mm-hmm. We we're just going to go to go to Hawaii and enjoy it. Um, so we planned the trip and that's where we went this past week. And I definitely told you, um, you, you, you told me with uh, with plenty of time to uh, adjust. I just always forgot about it. So, yeah, I don't because I, I, I had that thought where you were just like, wait, I didn't know this was happening. And, and <laughs> I, I, I thought I was like, did I tell him? And then I remembered, I was like, yeah, I totally told him because of there was something we were talking about and I don't remember what it was, but I did tell you, but Mm -hmm. I can understand Mm -hmm. uh, likely story when you don't care about your friends, you forget about the things that they say. (laughs) So we went to Hawaii. (laughs) Um, It was, it was good. Mm -hmm. There were just a lot of complications. Steven, Um, I'm sorry. I just got, because Congratulations. Um, This is the weird time of the pandemic, which Mm -hmm. I feel like we've had this time. When has it not been a weird time? Yeah. This this is the window where everyone thinks that everything is okay, but things aren't quite okay. Right now. Yeah. Right now is such a strange time. And I I will, I'll probably say this again, but uh, you absolutely got the the worst of both worlds. You, you got the worst deals of, pre COVID where things were just overcrowded and people are running around doing stuff and it's just, you know, gross and whatever. And, uh, and then you also got the worst of post COVID, which is everything's closed and it's hard yep. to make anything work. Like you, you just got no good deal out of this whole thing, but sorry, yep, go ahead. Much. Continue. continue. So, so, um, basically we had a few things that we wanted to do. Uh, a lot of them we didn't get to do because of closings. Mm-hmm. Um, or because we, uh, well, I'll I'll start with with this. I'm gonna I'm gonna say like what went wrong mm-hmm. first, just because it's 
it's, it's funnier get that out of the way me, yeah. and, but but also like we did do a lot of stuff that i really enjoyed mm-hmm. um and and it's just i guess easier to uh you know start with the lows and end with the highs you know? right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um so our plan was to have a, a rental a rented car um and let this be a warning to to everyone uh our plan was to have a rented car for the last two or three days because we wanted to go to certain spots to like um see uh, specific beaches and uh like see surfers and everything just kind of take in the 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 spirit of hawaii yes uh and come to find out uh even though hawaii like everyone says rent a car Mm -hmm. which is totally sound advice but we didn't book anything ahead of time because Mm -hmm. we've been burned before with things getting canceled because of COVID. so we decided we were going to Go with the flow. Yeah, kind of fly um, by the seat of your pants. Yeah. And so turns out, and everyone seemed surprised by this, uh-huh. um, there was not a single car available on the entire island that we were on. That's so, uh, how does that happen? There's like 10 different car like, real, like rental places. Because uh, what we think is that a lot of the rental places had to sell a lot of inventory mm-hmm, during mm-hmm. COVID. And th- based on what the Lyft drivers that we had told us, mm-hmm. Um, they had gotten slammed this th- th- this week that we were there and the week before it, and they just didn't expect right. <laughs> that much. We even got to the point, there was a smart car rental in our uh, condo lobby. Like, you know, the little boxes of wheels. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we even tried getting one of those. I, I love those and, things. I've, I've worn one of those for a long time. We went up to the guy, and he looked at us like we were crazy. He, like he, he seemed like really stressed yeah uh and he was like kind of rude but then as, as he started talking he he calmed down but uh, but i think that he thought we were expecting something from him that he couldn't give us all oh, right because he probably had a lot of rude people that were just like i need a car now and that's mm-hmm. your job and we were just kind of like hey what's what's the availability so he, he he eventually was just like okay i'll stop being a dick to you but he was just like <laughs> there are thirty seven thousand people or whatever coming to the island every single day like just this ridiculous number he's like all of them need a car <laughs> and so he's just like i'll put your name on a list and we we're like okay thank you wow but that's when it became evident we weren't gonna but it honestly ended up working out because i thought you were about to say that it was gonna be thirty seven thousand dollars to rent the car and i was gonna be like wow that's ridiculous no, although there were some cars there were some cars available but they were a ridiculous price like wow. i'm talking uh, one person, uh, uh, one of our Lyft drivers was telling us that this person tried to extend her rental by a day. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the the rental service was like, okay, that'll be like $1,600 for an extra day. Oh my gosh. And 1600 Yeah, just some ridiculous number. It, it, it's, just, it's just a crazy time over there because mm-hmm. like it's spring break for some places. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And everyone thinks because there's a vaccine, they can do whatever they want. Right. We're um, it's everything's back to normal because we've which, got we've right. had a vaccine for like two which weeks. I, I will say this about Hawaii: they they have a lot of. Oh, I, I, I skipped the best part. So um, you have to get a negative COVID test oh, before gosh, you go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, which totally reasonable. Mm-hmm. Uh, makes sense. That's how they have so few cases. Um, but the problem <laughs> is that you're you're result has to be within 72 hours of of your departure mm-hmm. we don't have the rapid test like or a version of the rapid test that they accept right here, where, where we live mm-hmm. so we had to go get like the standard test that takes up to 72 hours to get your results so mm-hmm. we took the test and then the day before we were supposed to fly out we both get an email saying that our test was inconclusive um so we had to drive for three hours to get a rapid test, push our trip back by a day, mm. um, pay three hundred dollars to get the rapid test. <laughs> oh my gosh! It was just, it was just crazy. Like it, it was just, it was unfair because we we did we did what we were supposed to do, uh-huh. but because the uh, stupid swab didn't get enough snot or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we did all that. Mm-hmm. And I, I do think that like it's a good thing that they do that. And oh, yeah. it, it does show in their numbers. But <clears throat> it is kind of ridiculous because if we had not had a negative COVID test um, when we landed, my understanding is that we would have 
like with no negotiation, like no question, like just flat out would have had to quarantine for 10 days. Wow. Even if we had a negative COVID test after we landed, we would have had to quarantine for 10 days, which wow. is obviously not an option. Right. Y'all weren't um, even there for 10 days. No, we were there for like five or six. You okay? You okay? Where are you? Are you on the floor? I'll be right back. Yeah, you good? Are you okay? What happened? All right, I'm back. Is Flynn she good? dropped one of his. Yeah, she was trying to get something from under the couch, and oh, Flynn dropped one of his heavier toys on her face. Oh my gosh, she's okay. Um, That's it. But what was I saying? Um, I think we were talking about it's the nice that test. they did that, but they uh, yeah. you would have had to quarantine for ten days. It, 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 see, my my whole thing is like, why not just make it to where we could show up because we knew we didn't have it. We're right. vaccinated. Like there's, there was z- basically z- zero chance that we had it. Mm-hmm. And I know that's um, a dangerous thing to say because that's what a lot of people say. Right. Who think that this thing is a hoax, which obviously it's not. But you guys have been, we all been safe and we've know. been safe. I'm we were already anti I was about to say we were already yeah. antisocial before this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> kicked there's, off. there's zero chance <laughs> unless if I can k- get it from my dogs, which right. I'm pretty sure that, they haven't confirmed that that's a thing. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we got there. And we ate at a place called Duke's, which is some famous surfer. He made a restaurant there, and he's, he's like, really famous down there. There's even a statue of him on the beach. That's that awesome. was really good. Yeah. I, I, I've never I heard of he, that, but that's amazing. I think he was a, um, like, like a, maybe a boxing champion or something, some kind of heavyweight champion. Uh-huh. And he loved to surf, and he was just really big there. So they, he became kind of like a, like a local. I don't want to say hero, just a, just a legend or g- something. guy that everybody really likes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I didn't really read about his story, but there was a lot of lore <laughs> that I didn't read. Um, but that was good. Uh, we were gonna go to a couple places to see the beaches, but that didn't work out. One right. of them was way too far away. And the other one uh, was closed. Right. Um, but we did get to go snorkeling. Um, That's fun. Yeah. The water there is amazing. Uh, like when we were flying out of Hawaii, mm-hmm. I looked down and I could see like to the ocean floor for like for a good few minutes. I just the like, water can't even so fathom far. that. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah it was really cool because where we went on the, on the beach that we were at, there was a a little reef. So we were actually able to snorkel right over. It was in shallow water too. Um, But we were able to snorkel over that. We saw some fish, saw a lot of sea urchins. These adorable kids uh, (laughs) when we were going out, were like, watch out, there's sea urchins. And the the little girl, it was like her and her brother. The little girl was like, yeah, they've got poison. (laughs) They've got poison. (laughs) She said something about poisonous, whatever. And it was just Uh like, oh, you're so cute. Um, but that was good. Um, we went to a luau, got to see a fire dancer. That was that was dope. yeah. That I saw the video of that. That looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, that was that was really cool. Um, ate a lot of food. We took a pit stop to Flavor Town. Um, the Flavor Town. It was it, it was a ghost kitchen. Are you familiar with what a ghost kitchen is? Yes, I actually am. I've, okay. I've, I it's a fascinating idea. Yeah. but it's it's brilliant. Yeah, we we actually ate at two ghost kitchen kitchens. One of them was Guy Fieri's uh-huh. um, Flavor Town or whatever, um, and the other one was Mr. Beast Burger. We got to eat there, Ooh. Um, and that was um, that was good. It, yeah, I, it, like Mr. Beast Burger was it was a good burger, mm-hmm. but like it wasn't the kind of burger where I'm just like, oh man, you have gotta, gotta have eat Mr. Beast that burger. again. Yeah, but but like if you want a good burger, you'll get it there. Um, <laughs> If and you Guy Fieri's burger, you'll get it there. Uh, Guy Fieri's Flavor Town or whatever. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> was it, it how was, did it compare to Chicken Guy? Is all I need to know. The Chicken Guy was on the menu. 
<gasps> really? Yeah, and I got the chicken guy sandwich. Oh, that's great. Uh, so I it was like, it was a ghost cheese, kitchen, but you know, I I, I, I did get a mac and cheese. I, I got a mac and cheese that. and a mac and cheese burger because I have a problem. Stephen, you made uh, the right decision. Um, I know I did. Anna might have uh, made a mistake, but I'll. I'll we actually also ate at a place called Twisted Mac, which their whole thing is that they just make mac and cheese. Oh, that sounds um, amazing. It was it was so good. They they did regular mac and cheese. Like we got one of those, but I also got pesto mac and cheese. Stephen, here's my proposition to you. Let's, you know, screw video games, screw, you know, all this. Let's just start a mac and cheese <laughs> restaurant. Are you <laughs> are you game for that? I'm I'm because I'm, I'm, I'll do I'm it game. right now. What would we call it? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I'll I'll brainstorm some ideas. Uh, but uh, if you come up with any on the on the spot, just let me know. Um, because I think that's a brilliant idea. I don't know that anyone else would come eat at it, but I would I would eat there every day, and that's really all. I that's all that I think a restaurant is for. As long as you get the food you want, that's all that matters. Yeah, I don't know if a um, business person would tell me that, but that's what I'm gonna. I would definitely not tell you. That. <laughs> um. But yeah, they had pesto mac and cheese. That was really good. It was very different, um, mm. but it was it was really good. Uh, honestly, like we did a lot of fun stuff, mm -hmm. um, but the food, like that's like that's probably what I have to talk about the most because we I feel like we ate something different every day. Mm. Uh, we had fresh pineapple. Ooh, that was yes. fantastic. We had papaya from a local uh, farmers market. Um, that was good. Um, what else? We we just had a chill time. Did you drink just, coconut water out of a coconut? With uh, a I drank. No, I didn't. Although we did get, we went to a, a Disney's resort out there for uh -huh. dinner mm -hmm. for our anniversary, and we got this drink. It was a frosted alcoholic beverage of some kind. <laughs> it made in a pineapple. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh man. Was it better than Dole Whip, I, I, or was it I like a kind of Dole Whip? We actually got Dole Whip as well. Okay, I understand. Um, it was basically like an alcoholic slushy that was super sweet and delicious in a pineapple, so it all tasted like pineapple too. I, I walked away, like I took three sips from that thing, and I looked at Anna and I said, I understand why alcoholics exist. <laughs> <laughs> it was I so good. I understand why they exist. Um, but really, it was just it was just a good time. Uh, it was good to get away, mm -hmm. um, and it was it was it was frustrating at times, but it was just good to be able to go somewhere else, right? Um, and eat a bunch of different food. And um, y'all get to hang out and and yeah. be together on your anniversary yeah, exactly. and everything. Can you see what the numbers are, by the way? I can. Well, I, I don't see them in the top right, but I I'm poke I'm peeking my head around and and taking a look, so it doesn't have to. Okay. I, I've got my eyes on the numbers. If I need to read them off to you, nah, you're good. Okay, you're good. Um, this is all so low stakes. The thing that I probably did the most in Hawaii, though, <laughs> yeah, this uh, is a great <laughs> transition. What we're about to happen right here um, was Monster Hunter Rise, Stephen, because. Uh, annihilated I monster annihilated hunter that game it was like, so good it came out and you text us the next morning well it was my it was morning for me i have no idea what time it was for you we're five uh, hours behind you okay well either way it it, <laughs> it uh you were just like okay so i just beat the campaign um i love the whatever and i was just like how have you it literally came out like a few hours ago like how has you how have you done all this yeah it's so I was excited about Monster Hunter Rise, mm -hmm. um, but it was just kind of like one of those things where it was, yeah, it, it'll be fun. I'll play mm -hmm. it every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, that's how you were feeling leading up to it. That's how I was it. feeling leading up to it, yeah. yeah. And it was just like, oh, cool, it comes out when we're on our trip, so that means on the flight back I'll have something to do. Right. Uh, and when we have downtime in the room, which we ended up having more downtime than we expected, but it ended right. up being okay. It was just, again, nice to just chill. Um. I, I played Monster Hunter and holy crap, the world was good mm -hmm. and probably a better game just from the sense of how powerful the the, the, the game is and the, the environments are right. It looks really stuff. good and all that. Yeah. yeah. Rise is way more fun. Like the gameplay really? has been. Yes. OK, just, just I say way more. fun. I mean, as somebody who who 
could not get into world, I would say, yes, it's more fun than than Rise, I would say. I, I think that they added just enough things between like they added the, the Palamutes, which mm-hmm. uh, if oh, you guys have uh, seen 10 out of 10 represent uh, uh, decision on their part. Yes, absolutely. Like Because when I started the game, uh, I think the night that we got there, um, just because uh, I was like, oh, let's see. Let's see what this game's all about. And it let me make my Palamute immediately. Mm-hmm. And I was able to recreate the spitting image of Flynn, my dog. The sniper um, of streams. The, the stream sniper himself, bean mode, uh, the st- destroyer of beans, destroyer. whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I made him uh, in the game and I was just like, oh, OK, yep. It, it, it's I, really good. It's like yeah. a really hilariously good uh, Im- uh, imagation. What, what's the word I'm looking for? Repre- representation, uh, spitting image. Different, spitting image. I don't know. Anyway, there's a word I can't, I can't think of. But yeah, it's really good what you did. Yeah. Uh, so that got me into it immediately, mm-hmm. but just the, the and world was was great. It, it was, but it was slow, and that's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. But um, because with world, it definitely had more of that feel of rewarding preparation and timing and everything, mm-hmm. to where like people who knew the moves of the monsters were rewarded. People who knew their weapons were rewarded more. Like it, it rewarded dedication more than well, not necessarily more than rise, but dedication was more vital. Yeah, they um, wanted you to dedicate with, a lot of time and a lot of thought yes. to what you were doing in that game. With world, you definitely had to to learn a mm-hmm. lot, and with rise, that's still there because it's the the core, like the foundational gameplay is is the same. Right. Uh, you got to know the monsters. But, you got to kill the monsters. Right. All that jazz. But they added. They made uh, some of the weapons a lot easier to use, like the hunting horn. Mm-hmm. They added the wire bug, which makes everything feel much more mobile, which is you're, super important. You're basically Spider-Man on air. It's amazing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's a hilarious description. But it's not infinite. Um, it's not infinite. It's, you... it's not, but it's pretty frequent. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, I was taking a drink. It's on a cooldown, um, but it, uh, it's, like it's a four very second brief. Cool down, yeah. maybe. And you've got two of them that you can use before. And you can you get extra. Out. You can get yep. extra mid um, mid mission. So, so that that helped a lot because you can do crazy things like, um, you can zip line to a wall, like just to a mountain, and you can mm-hmm. wall run up the mountain. Mm-hmm. And if you know what you're doing, you can basically climb this, um, without much hassle. Um, I like the uh, just, specification of if you know what you're doing. Yeah. Because like, I learned this pretty quick because mm-hmm. you just you, you use your wire bug to get onto the onto the climbing surface and then you start to run up. Mm-hmm. And then when you start to run out of stamina, you you bounce off then you press A and you'll catch yourself with a wire bug and then your stamina starts to recover. And then when it's close to being full, you swing back to the mountain and you start running up again. Then you just repeat. So you can do that infinitely. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's got that feel to it like like world did where. it um you're rewarded for knowing what you're doing, but mm-hmm. it feels less vital in rise just because they're like the, the wire bug does a lot to um, give you some wiggle room uh, mm-hmm. and room for error and incompetence. <laughs> um, <laughs> saying yeah, that as yeah. someone who has done incompetent things in the game. Right. Um, but if you know what you're doing and i mean brody's shown us some ridiculous things right. uh, on twitter on twitter like you you are rewarded for knowing what you're doing um twitter and, almost and, always makes me feel like i'm playing that game wrong but it's yeah <laughs> it's it's kind of like the rocket league thing where mm-hmm. you can feel like you are pretty good at rocket league and then you watch anyone play it that knows what they're doing and you're right. like wow what game is this <laughs> like it's they're playing a completely different game right that's kind of how monster hunter feels to where mm-hmm. The, the combat is is fantastic uh it's just you have to understand it you have to learn it it takes time and dedication and maybe it's the in uh addition of the palamutes um maybe it's the wire bug i, I don't know but i am for me enjoying the, this the one. palamute was pr- is a pretty big deal pretty, yeah for me too because because 
you can recruit you also get a multiple. bird no one ever talks about the bird the bird doesn't do a whole lot but you have a bird and that's important to me yes the bird is this game's version of the pig that you had Billed. in the world that you could put in outfits and stuff um but he's bird. you have bird um and uh what was i saying i don't know um just a lot more fun. i really enjoyed world mm -hmm. it, 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 there's something about rise that's just more fun yeah um, well, and, and you know, you, I think it's the accessibility. That's exactly what I was going to say. For me, we we play a lot of games of service, right? We're playing a game of service right now right. as we talk about this this whole thing. Um, um, but uh, it's rough when you have so many of those to keep up. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's nice about Switch for just any game is the convenience of being able to easily pick it up and go. Um, I don't play a whole lot of games at night. Um, like Lee Allison usually goes to bed at, uh, like at nine and I will either watch a show or do something in bed, um, while she's sleeping. Um, you know, with PlayStation games, we don't have a TV in our bedroom. So pulling a PlayStation in there is not easy to do and not convenient. And plus it would be way too bright. It would wake her up on a switch. Still a little bright, but I can at least turn the brightness down, kind of angle it my way. It's small. Um, that's really easy to do and get into. So mm -hmm. for a game of service game, it's so convenient to have that where you can just pick it up, jump in, do yeah. something. Um, and again, I to the convenience of it, with, of it too, like you yeah. were saying with world, it goes so quick. Like you don't have to spend 30 minutes prepping for a mission. You can just do it and, and get into it and go. So that makes it yeah, a lot it's been a, a lot ton better. of fun mm -hmm. and uh we finally got to play it we did a four-man uh did a four squad man, uh four-man hunt we did a couple hunts really we did but uh thanks to my buddy lightheart for coming in coming in clutch midstream just showed up and was like can i play <laughs> so we brought him in that was great um trying to think of what else we did but yeah it's it's really fun i like it i it for me the i am still struggling with the gameplay of it yeah um it's, it's not it's not that the gameplay is bad it's just not what i'm used to it's it's super different yeah and it's it's interesting because it really is about finding what weapon works best for you and how you want to play the game and for me, I think with most games, I like movement. I like to be able to move quickly and jump around and do tricks and stuff, which you would think would make me like the insect glaive. But I think I actually think I prefer the dual blades because you just are moving constantly right. with that and you can attack quickly and then get out. Um, so it's it's that is the, the, the part I'm trying to overcome. Um, and then the other thing I need to figure out is just what am I hunt like? What am I chasing in the game? Uh, because it's right. all about hunting the monsters to get um, uh, to get the, the armor or the pieces you need to make the armor you want, the cool weapons that you want, um, all that good stuff. So that's what I'm trying to figure out now is where do I fit into all that. So, But I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it a lot better than World just outright. And then uh, it's a lot more fun with friends too. So if you got yeah. some friends who want to play it, absolutely try it out. Hopefully we'll be able to play it more on the channel. Jeremy picked it up. Oh, uh, okay, great. He came back. Um, Brody and I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and Lightheart may come back if we ever play again. So he can always yeah. be our backup fourth. So yeah, um, yeah uh, I definitely want to play it some more too. So good. Um, well, do you want to? Since we're kind of on video games right now, do you want to talk about Outriders? Because that also came out this week, and I know I you love to talk. About Outriders. You've been contractually obligated to talk about Outriders for the yep. last several months. Sven, so this is your one, Sven. Make me make me an outright. What do they call it? Outriders. Uh, uh, they, they 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 call it Ambassador. I think Outriders okay. Ambassador. There you go. They, My brain they went to Stan. Outriders. You're an Outriders Stan, but you know I'm glad it's uh, Ambassador is a much better word <laughs> for what um, you're looking for. Well, Outriders came out, mm -hmm. um, and. I have been very pleased mm -hmm. with how people have reacted to yeah. Outriders because we all knew this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, people who, you know, actually 
stop and think for more than two seconds. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> um, but Outriders had a lot of launch day issues. Mm-hmm. A lot of server uh, issues. Even up, th- even through the weekend, there uh-huh. were a lot of issues. Um, but because they've been so transparent and and they have such a good um, social media presence when it comes to um, crisis, mm-hmm. uh, they just know how to. They, they respond to basically everybody. They they are constantly updating. Like every few minutes, you'll see, "Hey, uh, we are aware of these issues. We're working on them now." Mm-hmm. If there's an update at all, they are public about it. And so normally, as with a game like Avengers, if it launches with these kind of issues, mm-hmm. you expect it to just get completely blasted. Right. But and there is a lot of that happening. Right. But to my surprise, to my pleasant surprise, there is a significant amount. And in fact, from my corner, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm seeing more of this. But there are those people out there who are just like, hey, guys, calm down. This happens with every single game like this. Right. The game itself is great. Just give it a minute. <laughs> just give because <laughs> let them get the server running. I don't judge a game that that is always online. I don't judge an always online game mm-hmm. on technical um, stability mm-hmm. until like a week after it's been out. Yeah, a week or it's even like a month. Yeah, that's that's just how it is these mm-hmm. days. Um, and so like they, they've been handling. Uh, everything really well people have actually been pretty patient with it Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately people have used avengers as the scapegoat (laughs) for like they've been like wow outriders already surpassed uh avengers uh peak players on steam Uh uh-huh um in in one day yeah and it's like (sighs) this frustrates me because this game gaming journalism has a has such a hate boner for this game for avengers (laughs) Um, and I'm going to sidetrack real quick because if you look at article titles about this kinds of things, mm-hmm. you will see the article say something like Outriders already has surpassed Avengers uh, peak player count. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is not the story. Right. <laughs> that is that is not the story at all. The story is on Steam. Right. That And Avengers has d- had a notoriously bad time on PC. Right. Outriders targeted itself a good bit towards PC. Mm-hmm. So it's like maybe report the actual story so that there's not this continued misperception that Avengers is just this worthless game. It's just frustrating. Right. But I'm very happy for Outriders uh, to see they've got that kind of success. Apparently, they've had like this has been Square Enix's biggest launch in history. Wow. Um, that's what Andrew told me. I don't know if that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, with it being on Game Pass, I wouldn't be surprised. Right. Yeah, that definitely uh, <laughs> helps you out Yeah, when you've got that. Uh, but the game itself has been great. The mm-hmm. loot game is awesome. There's just such a sizable amount of stuff w- when it comes to like mods for gear, just the amount of gear. Um, the skill trees are are bigger than, I mean, we knew this in the demo, but the skill trees are, are, are pretty vast. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's just, it's quality. Mm-hmm. Um, the polish isn't all there, but the game itself is a game that I want that I am enjoying my time in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm all for it. I I've been really enjoying the story has actually been really good. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the, the dialogue continues to be really awkward sometimes, <laughs> but I think it knows how awkward it is right. because there have been like really funny, just tongue in cheek moments mm-hmm. <laughs> the characters. Um, but, but it's been good it, it, yeah. at the end of the day. The story, like the world is interesting, in mm-hmm. my opinion. The gameplay is just a blast. Um, and it's got a, it's got good loot. And mm-hmm. I can't wait to get max level so I can work towards expeditions. Um, and, you know, start crafting my build. But yeah, but it's crazy because like you get like you are engaged in the loot game from from as soon as you start getting loot, you are engaged in the loot game Mm -hmm. to where uh, like there's this ability I have called a toxic turret and it Mm -hmm. makes a turret that basically behaves like a flamethrower flamethrower to where it's constant stream, but it's short range. Right. And it does toxic damage, but there's a mod I can get that makes it to where the toxic turret does ice damage instead of toxic. Ooh. 
Um, and that's just a mod that you can get on armor. Um, any piece of, of armor blue and up because blue is the minimum rarity for mods. Right. Uh, since you can craft any piece of gear, uh, every time I upgrade a specific, I think it's on my helmet. Every time I upgrade my helmet, I take it to the crafting bench and I craft that mod onto it. So I can keep that turret doing ice damage because I'm all about ice damage. Um, even though I'm nice. not, ice level, I, I, I do. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger on Batman and Robin really inspired me to change myself. <laughs> That's what changed you all those, all these years. That's you, what it was. You know what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age? Oh, man. <laughs> That was my senior quote. <laughs> that was my senior quote. Wow. <laughs> that and um, stay cool. <laughs> stay cool. That's not true. I didn't have a senior quote. I didn't actually have a senior year. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just been, a, it, it's been great. Yeah. Uh, I hope that its success does something to the industry. Like, like I've been mm-hmm. saying, like I, I want outriders to be kind of a beacon right. for other developers that not everything has to be a service title. Transparency is key. Um, even if the product itself isn't perfect, like even if it has flaws, those can be overlooked if the core like product is something that people want. Right. Um, and that's been really nice to see, like, because to me, I don't mind a little bit of wonkiness in the games that I play, mm-hmm. you know, a little wonky it, is charming. Yeah, it, it can be charming. Um, I mean, look at Bethesda and Skyrim, which <laughs> is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm not big into Skyrim, because it's just a huge double standard. Right. Uh, where everyone sees like a Ubisoft game. They're like, wow, it's so buggy trash game. And then they see all the bugs in Skyrim like when you get hit by a giant and you fly a million feet in the air they're like haha it's so funny so quirky love you Bethesda Mm -hmm. just like come on but it's just nice to see that there can still be a new IP succeed that's not you know backed by a really big third party I mean Square is 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 a big third party, but mm-hmm. this game is just kind of obscure. Right. Cause you wouldn't expect something like this from square. People can fly. Isn't a super notorious developer. Um, but just seeing that these guys clearly want this game to succeed. They want to play this game mm-hmm. themselves. Like you can just see it in, in, in the game and the way they talk about it, the way they're just passionate about delivering. Um, and I want more developers to be like that. Mm-hmm. I think the goal should be for developers to want to play the game that they're creating. Right. Cause even after working if, on it and all the, all the stuff that right. goes around, if you still want to play it, then it's, it's gotta be good. Right. Because if you create with the mindset of, of the consumer that you're selling to, mm-hmm. then there's going to be a lot more mindfulness in what the game has to offer. Mm-hmm. So even if the game isn't perfect, there is that understanding of, wow, the people who made this, actually thought of the things that i'm thinking of like it feels like a game made by people who play games right that's a huge important like it's it's that matters it matters it does Mm -hmm. um so i've 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 had a ton of fun with it the fact that like it just the the whole power fantasy thing the Mm -hmm. fact that there are a ton of bosses the boss fights are fantastic but there is a giant magma spider like like literally fought a spider in a volcano um with andrew and um, I was able to crowd control it with with the freeze effect. I was able to freeze it with ice. That's amazing. Like, that's such a big deal because uh-huh. so many games, just for the sake of retaining difficulty, um, you can't affect the for, boss like that. You can't yeah. affect the bosses, or yeah. you can, but you can't do it very frequently. But no, mm-hmm. I'm able to stun lock bosses with ice. That's amazing. And, and, and it, the game's just like, yeah, have fun. I fought a giant in the forest. It's the size of a skyscraper. I froze him uh, with ice. <laughs> I froze him. I, I fought literally a guy who sees himself as a god who like, like he thinks he's a fire god and he melted this other dude who was really powerful. He melted him to the wall. Uh-huh. I froze him. <laughs> <laughs> fire cools it's, ice. 
it's just so like again that's one of those things where like they know that someone playing a game their game Mm -hmm. if, if they spec into status like i'm kind of doing they're going to want to be able to do that status on bosses Right. They, they understand that that's important. Like they want you to feel powerful. So they let you feel powerful. It's not that hard, <laughs> but they're it's one of not the only rocket science. Doing. Just let people it's feel, really feel powerful in video games. Yeah. And outriders more than I mean, honestly, more than most games I've played in a very long time. Mm-hmm. Outriders lets you feel powerful and mm-hmm. doesn't even like, it just doesn't care. Right, like it, it, it's just like you want to equip three legendary weapons. Sure, you want to break the game, go for it. You want to break the game? Yeah, why not? Send us your clips. <laughs> <laughs> Send us clips of you breaking our game. We love it. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's it, and, and that's one of the reasons again that it's just so important to me mm-hmm. is because this game feels important. Yeah, it, it feels like a very much needed. Um game to exist right now where everything is just becoming too corporate too like cookie cutter like ubisoft is a great example of that everything is just blending into being the exact same thing re-released over and over again and to see that we can have a looter shooter Mm -hmm. that is original and fun and doesn't feel like it answers to anyone that's that's just fantastic yeah People can fly. You, 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 you fly, fly away. People can fly. You keep fly high. Just keep keep doing what you're doing. Keep fly soar high. The um the thing go. I, up. I, I was gonna quote. I was gonna quote so, was something that one of us said from a Far Cry arcade stream, but I couldn't remember the quote, so I panicked and I just started tripping over my own words. I like them, um, but I yeah, think- they, they have my full support. Um, I think they've done a great job. I think that they've created something special mm-hmm. um, and they've handled the backlash that comes from, and it was honestly, a lot of it was square because yeah. squares they're using square servers. Mm-hmm. So it really it was more the publisher than it was the developer, but the developer handled. Right. They the communicated really with their well. audience. Well, about like, it. It, it really is textbook. Like it, if there is such a thing as like, some college course on how to you know market your a Mm -hmm. product Mm -hmm. outriders it like to me seems like the standard for how to market a video game product um but that's just my opinion well i Uh, what i was gonna say so i haven't played it uh, other than what we did in the demo i think they were really smart about their launch um because first off the demo i think was a great idea um they were patching the demo yeah like the constantly so, so the, they were patching the demo using the feedback from for players to basically edit the final game as well yeah which is super smart the demo was basically a play test exactly I, I think that was really smart it i almost feel like that was a soft launch it, like you know yeah. restaurants have like soft opens like that that was kind of their soft launch to just let people play the game i feel like a lot of people I know I know people didn't like do reviews off the demo, but I feel like I heard more people talk about the game when the demo came out than I did this. Um, but yeah. that gets me to my next point. I feel like they they just timed it all really well. Like yep. I feel like this launch was was rather soft. Like I was telling you, I haven't seen reviews, I haven't seen people a ton of people talking about it, but there are people talking about it. And I think part of it is they have nothing they don't it's not that they don't have anything bad to say, but like it's mostly good reports <laughs> back. Yep. So I feel like that is that's not getting as much traction, you know, but right. um, I don't know. I, I just think they handled it really, really well how they they did this whole thing. Um, they just were really, really smart about with the demo mm-hmm. and just launching. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, they didn't it launch was, soft, but it, it just that's kind of how it worked out. That it, I mean, that it was basically a persistent soft. beta. Mm-hmm, like it, mm-hmm. they, they call it a demo. They say it wasn't a beta, mm-hmm. but it was a beta. Right. But in a good way, because. The, well, the, the reason it's not considered a beta is because it is still available even now you mm-hmm. can still go play the demo it is there for people who have not opted into the game yet they can still go play it they can take their progress up to the main game so it's a demo in that sense but pre-launch it was totally a beta mm-hmm. and it was smart for them to treat it like a beta because they were able to use that time to play test it make changes 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I think it paid off because the beta was, or the demo was a bit rough when it came to connections. Right. And now, uh, apart from, you know, the server downtime and stuff, the gameplay has been super smooth. Yeah. I haven't had any lag um, in, in what, and I mean, you remember I was jumping all over the place in our yes. gameplay. Yes. But now it, it, I'm playing with my brother who's over in Idaho mm-hmm. and normally we would have issues because he's more West coast and we're more East coast. Right. Um, but I haven't seen any issues at all. Let's you and I play Steven and see how, how long that holds up <laughs> because I inevitably bring all the glitches for yeah. you. Much like Thanos, you are inevitable. <laughs> I am inevitable. Um, awesome. Well, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. As soon as it goes on sale, I'm, I'm going to pick it up. So yeah. I want to, I want to get it back into it. Uh, all right. Let's move on. Let's let's dive into some TV shows that we've been watching this week. Um, Invincible. This is a new animated TV show. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime Video. So if you're a Prime subscriber, you have Amazon Video. So you have no excuse to watch it or to not watch it. <clears throat> um, it's awesome. So uh, it's like you said, it's from um, the guy who, who did... Uh, yep, Robert Kirkman, who did The Walking Dead. Um, so it's really, really creative. It's really good. Um, it was a comic book first, but now they're doing a TV show of it. Um, I was actually listening to a podcast with him in it that, that he was in today, and he was talking about how when he finished writing um, the comic, that's when they actually started writing for the show. <clears throat> yeah, so he said it was kind of interesting because he got to – he said he kind of grew as a writer and I mean, this is how it is with every project, right? As you go, you kind of get better at what you're doing. You kind of figure out your characters. So he said it was really interesting for him to, to get to where um, I'm blanking on the main character's name, Mark, um, where Mark gets at the end of the show or at the end of the, the series um, and then kind of bring that energy and that knowing where he's going to go back to the beginning. Um, so, uh, it's every, there are some different things from the comics from what I understand. I never read the comics, but, um, they are doing some things a little bit differently. Again, just kind of, he's grown as a writer. So he kind of knew some things. It's like, well, I I probably would have done that differently knowing where it goes. So, um, just, you know, the normal stuff you, you hear about, but, uh, the show, the premise of the show, I don't know how to, so basically this is, this is, um, Mark, he's a superhero named Invincible. Um, in episode one, he doesn't have powers, but within like the first, the other interesting thing about this, um, this is just a small thing. This is an hour long animated show. It's like 42, really? whatever, 42, 45, you oh, know, 43, kind of 50 cool. minutes. Um, you don't see a lot of shows, uh, animated shows that are no. like that long. Like you'll have Not a TV all. drama that's a live action that's an hour you'll and then you'll have an anime that's like 30 minutes right and of course you can you know just blow through some anime but um uh this is an hour long superhero animated show so it's almost like watching an animated uh superhero movie um yeah. uh all at once so um there are four episodes out right now but they launched the first three um all at the same time so there was a lot of how content. long the season's gonna be I don't, I want it, but you know, standard is like 10 or 12 episodes, I think. Um, so I, I don't remember how long they said it was going to be, but I, I don't think it's going to be longer than like 10. I don't think it's going to be like a 24 run oh, or anything yeah, like that. There's no way like no. If with an animated series that long mm-hmm. exclusive streaming service. I would be surprised if it made it to 10. Yeah, no. Uh, so we'll, we'll see, but anyway, um, there's four out there now. So you, you, there's a lot to go watch if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but anyway, the premise is Mark, uh, he gets his, his powers early, early on. Um, his dad is basically Superman. Um, yeah. voiced by JK Simmons, voiced by JK Simmons looks like JK Simmons too. Yep. Um, who also is the voice of the yellow peanut M&M in all the peanut in all the M&M commercials. Is he really? J. Jonah, J. Jonah, his two most iconic roles, J. Jonah Jameson, the yellow peanut M&M. How have I never known that? That is Go a watch it in that commercial. You will hear it immediately. I well, that's what I'm saying. I'm surprised I haven't heard it immediately. But anyway, that's funny. I, I don't know how I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, so he he's basically Superman, and so Mark is basically trying to live up to his dad's legacy. Um, 
And that's really as much as I know. So, so the show is Mark learning his powers, um, right. which I mean, he's just, he's Superman too. Essentially he can fly. He has super strength. Um, he's all that, all that. He's invincible. <laughs> Literally yeah. like unkillable, unhurtable. <laughs> yeah. So which I you know, it's funny they call it invincible and I say that he's Superman. I I assume Superman I mean Superman's died before, so I mean Superman can be killed, I Superman guess. Superman can be killed. Uh Dark Side in the Death of Superman, I'm pretty sure. Not not Dark Side, uh Abomination. Yeah. I don't think he used Kryptonite to kill Superman. I think it was just literal beaten to death. Yeah, I, I think I think that's right. So anyway. Omni Man is Superman then, basically, because that's that is he he can be <laughs> he can he can take a beating, um, but he's for the most part you know unkillable, untouchable. Um, anyway, the show is basically about Mark learning to be a hero. What kind of hero does he want to be? Um, you know, he teams up with a younger team of heroes. Um, it very much is spoofing DC a little bit. Um, a lot. I would I would compare this show to The Boys. Is 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 it's is its closest comparison? The other thing, it's it's rated MA. It's or it's it's for mature audiences, right? Like this is not a show to watch with your kids. Um, and based on everything I've told you right now, you're probably like, "How do we get there? Like, what are you talking about?" Yeah. People have been saying to like I've been seeing posts on Facebook where if I mean if you've seen the boys, mm-hmm. Homelander, mm-hmm. You, you probably see Homelander and you're like, "Wow." How can it get worse than Homelander? Yeah. People have been saying, just wait for Invincible. I <laughs> And that has me stoked. I, yeah, I don't know what more I can say without spoiling um, the big twist at the end of episode one um, that I still don't really know like what is going on. And I, I'm sure, you know, the people who read the comic books and everything are just like, yep, just wait, just wait. It's going to get crazy. So I I don't know what is really going on, but there's a huge twist that happens at the end of episode one um, that I can't wait to see where it goes and what it's going to mean. I, I just don't know where where it's going, because, uh, you know, right. you, you mentioned Homelander. Um, and so you kind of have that vision in your head of like, OK, you know, Homelander was supposed to be the one good hero, but then ends up being like just this really the messed up guy. The worst. Um, <laughs> It's it's similar, but not the same. Like uh, and I don't, I don't again, I don't know how to say much more without spoiling it. It's not Homelander's like messed up like he he and and understandably so when you find out like his his backstory of how like he was basically raised in isolation, um, you know, has all kind of <laughs> all kind of weird issues Um this person doesn't have weird issues, but they definitely have an ulterior motive going on um, right. that I don't fully understand what it is yet. But um, it's really good and it's really violent, um, which, you know, is, is good or bad, depending on how you feel about it. But um, it's definitely not it's definitely not your typical superhero show. If if the boys is think of the boys, but without the immaturity, does that make sense? Like, like the, the boys. Like the, yeah. I juvenile feel like, humor. Yes, juvenile humor, and like they don't make fart jokes or anything like that. And and which, uh, which the boys, it's it's got that to where there is a lot of like you know mother's milk being right. choked Ugh. by a giant penis. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, I <laughs> forgot about that. But the boys is still mm-hmm. like don't, don't get me wrong, it's got some really smart humor. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and it's fantastic. But like, so I so this the admissible you're saying basically is that it's a show that takes itself very seriously it's, isn't too tight to speak it's about very serious um i'm sure there are some funny there there are some jokes there are some funny moments in there there's there are some comedy relief characters but it's definitely just i don't, I don't even say it's i haven't seen anything well i don't know how to i don't know how to explain this when i think of like oh man that's dark like that's rough like um there's some really episode one of the boys right um the one of the main characters his girl gets destroyed by a flash literally liquefied walking you know just running through the street um that's just that's dark nothing like that has happened um but it does have that same sort of this is the reality of a superhero world kind of thing um, and like what, what really happens when superheroes are allowed to just do whatever they want kind of thing. So I don't know. I think it's going to explore some different things than the boys. 
Um, and obviously with it being animated, I think there's some, some cool things they can do with that. I've always said that animated fights are just worlds cooler, um, and exciting, more exciting to me at least than, uh, some, some live action stuff, but, um, we'll see, we'll see where it goes and, and how far it gets. But I, I love good animation. I like, I, I just love a good animated show. And, and yeah, the animation yeah, it, is really good too. Yeah. I, I and really like, like it. you said, Mm-hmm. Like, fights in animation can just be like, like they can just be way more crazy like mm-hmm. you can get away with so much more mm-hmm. um, and just you can be so much more imaginative and and visual mm-hmm. with with an animated style and mm-hmm. so I'm really excited to see what they did um, wow. and the, the cast based on what I've seen looks amazing and I love J.K. Simmons he's one of the most underrated actors I think Real, real side real quick sidetrack have you seen whiplash uh i don't think so that's the movie with miles teller and jk simmons where he's the the drumming teacher okay uh, he, he, oh my god there's amazing film like jk simmons is one of the greatest villains of all time in this movie like he throws a chair at, at the main character like more than once um j- very good movie it it it, it is literally just Miles Tetler's character trying to be an, a, an amazing jazz drummer, but huh. it somehow feels like a horror movie because it's so sus- suspenseful with with the drama and everything. I definitely recommend it. If you ever are on an airplane and you can watch it or whatever, Whiplash. Whiplash. Go watch it. Okay. A fantastic movie. Good to know. Good to know. Um, well, anyway, I don't. I don't Probably know what more. Best I... performance since the Peanut M&M. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I, I don't know what more I can say about it without without being spoiler, but um, I really really like it. I'd I'd recommend it. Don't watch it with your kids. Um, not that you have kids, Stephen, but just to anyone else that's that's out there, don't watch it with your kids. It's not that kind of superhero show. Can um, Flynn watch it? Flynn Flynn can probably handle it. I think he's old enough. He he he, he can Minnie handle it. Shouldn't. Minnie probably shouldn't. She's probably not ready yet. She's she's fragile. She's still she's still got some innocence in her. She's she she's not ready for the dark the dark world we live in. Um, but yeah, it's really good. Amazon Prime, go check it out. Uh, and I can't wait to hear what you th- you think of it, Steven. So I'm pumped. I'm probably gonna watch it. Um, well, I might watch it some tonight. You you've got four episodes to watch, so you got like four hours to to catch up on, which is and great. I also so. have uh, Falcon Winter Soldier to catch up on. You do have Falcon Winter Soldier to catch up on. Um, but we can talk about episode two because you're caught up on that one. I am. So. Falcon and Winter Soldier. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. You're gonna have to walk me through what you remember from episode two because I'm, I'm on episode three, mulling uh, all that. You do the walkthrough. Sam, you do the walkthrough. Sam episode. and Bucky mm-hmm. team up. They they're finally, they reeling. finally got together. Yeah. They're reeling from John Walker, um, having the shield. Yes. And- this episode opened with. We, we meet John Walker for the first time and we see him yep. in the locker room and he's like, man, it feels weird being back here because we're back at his hometown. And um, basically, we just kind of get to get a real quick peek into who he is and what he's doing. And I'll say this. I know he's going to end up being bad and I know that they want us to hate him, but they're doing or no, I know that I know that we all hate him. But I think Marvel is doing a really good job of not giving us a reason to hate him. Like he, they set him yeah. up to to make sense as a cho- he's a logical choice. Um, but yeah. then throughout the rest of the episode, and we can talk about this, you can see the seam start to fall apart. And right. he, I really think he's cracking under the pressure of what it means to be Captain yeah. America. Um, and I think that's what we're going to see. They, but they made him a realistic character, whether he becomes a villain or not. Right. Like. I like how you can understand why he was chosen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, And, and he seems capable. Mm -hmm. He seems like a good person. He supposedly Uh, doesn't even have super serum and he can throw that shield pretty good. So I'll, you know, I'll give that a pass. Well, they, they make the throwing the shield, not that difficult. Hawk, I can throw the shield. Like (laughs) (laughs) he, he, he's, he threw the shield in uh, age of Ultron. Did he really? I completely missed that. Forgot about it was that. during the the dinner party scene. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Very, very quick, but 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 yeah. Like, um, I, I like how they're doing that because um, everyone hates him. 
Mm -hmm. and and marvel knows episode one everyone hated him yeah yeah but it's just like they could make him the most like flawless man Mm -hmm. they could have his opening scene where he's literally like carrying puppies and free dinners to orphanage i mean they just about did but that's yeah for pretty much like they they could have made him the most wholesome man Uh and everyone would have been like you're not steve and they would have still hated him (laughs) um which is great because they've effectively put us in the shoes of falcon and and bucky mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. it was a very clever way to to acknowledge fan reaction in the narrative that they're telling right so that was very clever mm-hmm. um and honestly i hope he doesn't end up being a villain i hope uh it ends up being more along the lines like you were saying that he he cracks under the pressure he just can't take it right um i i hope that we are not given a good reason to hate him as a man. Right. Uh, because that would be so much more effective to me mm-hmm. um, if our hate ended up being unjustified. Well, what I was going to say is it's, it's funny you call him a villain. Cause like, what is a villain anymore in, and, right. and this is something I love about Marvel, but like what, what really makes a villain? Like he's not going to be just some evil guy, period. Um, he's, he's going to be somebody that messed up and, or, or can't handle the pressure or whatever. Something's going to happen, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes. Cause I think they've yeah. given him a great foundation to launch off of, um, to see what is he going to, what is he going to do? What is he going to be about? But anyway, um, yeah, but then Fal- uh, Bucky and Sam finally get together. Um, and they go I, on a little, a little mission. I, I like I mean, they, they've always had good chemistry as characters, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I feel like the show is doing that thing that I hate <laughs> where um, a character's competence is sacrificed to elevate another character uh-huh. because Bucky has seemed like a bumbling idiot. Uh, in, well, at least in episode two, he did. Yeah. He when, he, when, he, right. when he f- jumps out of the airplane and, and can't do the superhero yeah, landing. Like, he he just seems like he's coming off as unreasonable and mm-hmm. hot headed, which Bucky, he's not he's he's not hot headed. He's calculated. Right. Mm-hmm. That's like he has to be mm-hmm. for him to be the winter soldier. Um and he's he's calm under pressure. And then and they're just portraying him as just this brutish guy that can't control himself, mm-hmm. which can't control himself, that's fair but it'd be a lot more in character to me if we saw him struggling with, you know, maintaining his emotions, Mm -hmm. but we just don't see him do that. He's just like straight up. This is BS Falcon. What did you do? Why'd you do this? Mm -hmm. And it just, it just seems like then I say they do the thing that I hate. um, it, It seems like Falcon is like they're definitely trying to make us like Falcon better than Bucky. I, I don't feel that way. I feel like it's more of a, he's kind of cracking. Um, there is that great line at the end that he has where they finally kind of confront each other, um, in the therapy session. And, uh, he's basically that he's been asking this whole episode. Why did you give up the shield? Why did you do this? And, and Sam has his reason and it's, you know, fairly logical and we'll see where that lands. Um, but he just kind of lets him have it of like, Steve trusted you with that. And if you, if he's wrong about you, then he's wrong about me. Um, yeah. and I think, I think he's falling apart under the pressure of that is, is part of it. Right. Um, so I, I think he's just got a lot of stuff going on and that's, that's yeah. why it's like that. Cause I don't think, you know, you, you mentioned that it's, it's, you know, you hate it when they do that to make another character look better. I don't think. I don't think Falcon looks any better for Bucky's incompetence at this point. Um, well, Cause uh, they in, haven't really, other of, than the first episode where he had that really cool fight scene, I haven't seen anything that just made me go, wow, man, Falcon is just awesome. Well, I mean, so, it was that whole op that they did before they ran into um, John Walker and, uh, and the other guy. <laughs> well, uh, but I don't, uh, <laughs> Battlestar. Um, Battlestar, yeah. I, but I don't like, think was, like it's 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 a nitpick. It, yeah. it is, mm-hmm. but there. And I'm not saying I felt this way the whole episode. Mm-hmm. But there was one stretch of scenes where they did go on that op together, mm-hmm. where it just felt like Bucky forgot how to how to be a hero or or a, or, or a soldier. He just mm-hmm. was this idiot with a lot of emotions, and Falcon was over there just like 
doing everything right and Bucky couldn't do anything right. See, I didn't read it as he's doing it all wrong. I just read it as this is they're both so different in how they approach things. And he just wanted to go in and his instinct is to just kill and to just to to just take out the enemy. And uh, Falcon is just trying to is trying to play a longer game. And and Bucky, f- for the most part, just jumped in like he Fal- Falcon's been tracking these guys. He and Torres have been following them and 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 doing all this like so he's got a lot more understanding. Yeah. Bucky just kind of came along for I the just, ride. So I just don't want that to be a trend. I like I want them, if they're going to be a pair, they need to complement each other's strengths you, and weaknesses. You haven't seen episode three yet, but I think once you see that, you'll say, oh, okay, no, nah, they're not doing that. Okay, um, that makes me feel better. So, I, episode, I love ep- Bucky as a character. Episode uh, three, and- Falcon doesn't really do anything cool. In fact, I would say that he messed up some stuff in episode three. Um, Good. So, maybe... Everyone needs to mess up equally. That's that's the law. There you <laughs> that's <go>. my law. <laughs> that's the law. <laughs> Everyone must mess up equally. Not that everyone should be perfect. Just everyone should mess up equally. Yeah. So amazing. Um, well, yeah, I think you'll feel better about that. But Good. Um, I love that mission with them together. I hated seeing uh, John Walker come in and save them, kind of, because he they, they ended up failing too. Um, I love the car scene where he pulls up and he's like, come on, guys, get in. And they just keep walking. I loved that whole scene. Yeah. Um, I, I reacted the same way uh, Bucky did when um, Battlestar introduces himself. He's like, I'm Battlestar. And and <laughs> Bucky's like, stop the car. I'm getting out. He was just <laughs> like, I'm done. That's uh, that is exactly how I felt. I was like, oh, my God, Battlestar. That's what is this guy going for? Like, OK, whatever. So that was uh, that was a fun scene. But what what do you think about John Walker right now? I know we talked about him early on, but um, uh, right you know, now, um, mm-hmm. I think that he is, he is a good character. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that he definitely lacks the X factor that Steve Rogers had. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like I said, I hope that he doesn't end up just becoming like, oh, I was Hydra all along. Or <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I was that Hydra all along. <laughs> um well, really, no, doubt, really doubt really doubt that i do think yeah. y- you know about the power broker at this point right remind me so power broke uh, so the uh the flag smashers we met carly right you met carly in this most recent episode she's the girl with the red hair um she's the leader of the flag smashers um she gets a text uh you know they stole medicine and and all this other stuff they get a text at the very end of episode two. You know, they're trying to escape back to their base or whatever. Uh, they get a text at the end from the power broker that says, you've, st- you've stolen something from me. Um, and I forget exactly what he says. Like, I'm going to get it back or you're going to regret it, something. Um, and so there's this messaging. We don't know who this power broker is. Um, and there's a, I, I, people have a lot more theories after episode three. Um, Mephisto. <laughs> you know? Uh, but, uh, one theory is that John Walker might be the power broker, um, that he, he was actually supposed to be given, uh, superhero or no, not superhero, super soldier serum. Um, but it was stolen by the flag smashers and he hasn't gotten to get it yet. So interesting. Yeah. That might be his X factor or whatever. Um, but yeah, I really like his character too. I'm, I'm excited to see where they go with that. Um, I was leading somewhere with that and I'm, I'm already blanking on what it was. I don't know. Anyway. I, I I still just really don't want Falcon to get the shield, but I know that they're going to give him the shield. I'm I'm really because you also met Isaiah in this last episode, right? Yes. Yeah, that was really cool that there was already a black Captain America basically in existence, but America didn't didn't want that yet. Um, and so he got, you know, put in jail and was experimented on. Um, that'll come back later again in episode three. Um. But uh, yeah, that was really cool. And it was really interesting to see Falcon react to that um, too and how he was just so upset about that whole situation. Um, but anyway, I, 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 I'm curious what they're going to do with it um, because and, and the interesting thing about this show is like it really is showing us why both of these heroes deserve that shield. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we're seeing Maybe they'll just split it in half and they'll each use half. Of the shield. I mean, that could be cool. 
You know what would be funny? I just thought this this literally just came to my head. What if <laughs> what if at the end uh they just go to Wakanda and we're like, Can you make us like an extra make shield? Another one. <laughs> Can you make a second one? Like I know we I know like America technically just kind of stumbled you know upon this piece of metal. What? They had to have rest- oh wait, no, that's right, because Cap get wait. I don't Who's know. Shield? Did I, Cap give? You are 100%. I have no idea. I have no idea. I've wondered the same thing because it breaks in the yeah. final fight with Thanos. I have no idea. You have to they assume. They the timeline. You have to assume, right, God, that either, either, what, well, I don't know that they would have had time, right? Because it, like, they literally took it back. Steven, I don't know. I don't know, man. Endgame is a bad movie. Like that's that it is it is not a well written movie and people who who say that it's perfect mm-hmm. are kidding themselves. You're wrong, all yeah. of you. It is such a flawed movie. Well, and you know it's funny. I've seen a lot of people, and I I kind of agree with this. I feel so differently about Falcon or not Falcon. Uh, uh, Steve Rogers going back in time at the end of Endgame. I feel so differently about it now that we've seen. Uh, that we're watching this number one primary reason Bucky who is, is, you know, in therapy and is dealing with so much, like so many issues. He's a man out of time now too. Um, and he's had the, he has this horrible history that he's trying to overcome and trying to deal with. And Steve just leaves him. Like, I mean, sure he gets his happy ending, but like he leaves his best friend to, do you know to just just to go back in time to you know hang out with peggy or whatever i mean that's great for him but sucks for bucky and then on top of that all this pressure that sam is now having to deal with and has you know giving up the shield and not knowing how to handle all the responsibility that steve just laid on him i just i really yeah. hate that that's I, it's a great ending for steve but like when you get to the reality of it that yeah. we didn't earn yet like it, it needed because it, it, it came out of nowhere like literally you didn't know that ending was going to happen until you saw that he was the one going back in time to return everything no like, i mean he, i think i think people wanted that to be his ending that right he somehow right. ended up with peggy and it all worked right, out but right. we didn't but know I'm how we get there we didn't earn it yet because the cons- like the repercussions hadn't been considered yet mm-hmm. like it, it felt like we rushed to that conclusion and we didn't have any time for him to consider all of those things or the effect on the, on the world. Like it, to me, it seems like we needed like another captain America movie or something to mm-hmm. justify that outcome. Cause that's a big thing to happen. And it just seems like they threw it in there. Mm-hmm. And, and I agree that it is a good place for his character to end up, but I just feel like that conclusion hadn't been earned yet. Mm. I get that. I get that. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm still loving the show. The show's great. Um, we've only, well, with episode three, which I guess we'll have to cover next week, uh, once you've caught up a little bit, but, uh, we've only got, we're at the halfway point as of right now. So, um, I'm really curious where it's going to go from here. Um, I'm, I'm just loving these shows, man. I, 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 I almost, I hesitate to say this, but I almost like these more than like your standard Marvel movie. Cause it's yep. just like, it feels like every week I'm getting a new Marvel movie with the same heroes. It's like, it's just a continuation. Um, and I love it. It's just great. Um, Lee Allison and I just get together every Friday and it's like, all right, it's time for Falcon winter soldier. We got to watch the, watch the whole thing. We got to catch up, keep up. It's just great. Hey everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of total cast. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, there's a couple things you can do to help us out. Number one, if you're on YouTube, you're already at TrollGames.com. You can like this video, share it with your friends, uh, leave a comment, all that good stuff that you do, you know, on YouTube. Uh, you can also watch the podcast on Facebook. That's at TrollGames on Facebook. Um, you can leave a comment, like the page, follow the page, all that good stuff over there. Um, that helps helps out that page. Uh, if you're an audio listener, you're listening on Apple Podcasts. We'd love it if you'd leave us a review. That really helps people find the podcast and just kind of hear hear thoughts from other people about it. And so that, that helps people find it and, and watch it. So we'd, we'd appreciate it if you did that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the podcast airs every Monday, 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. 
Uh, but we also do live streams throughout the week. Normally, we do live streams on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday around 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Uh, you can watch those on YouTube, Facebook, uh, but also on Twitter, at Chortle Games on Twitter, and on Twitch, twitch.tv slash chortle underscore games. So lots of places to keep up with us, lots of things going on. Uh, Steven's back, so we are back in our normal live streaming uh, schedule. We um, we had a big week weekend, or we had a big week this week. We did a lot of a lot of streams, a lot of long streams. We did like a couple three hour streams, which is pretty good for us. So mm -hmm. um, good good stuff in there. We played take it takes two, which is a lot of fun. If you haven't watched that, it's a that's a good one to go back and watch. Um, this week, we're going to stick with the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, I will be around Thursday and Friday. Oh, no. I will be around Thursday. Uh, but I am uh, I am starting what I'm lovingly calling the Phoenix March. Um, I have a wedding every weekend leading up to the birth of my son. And that's if my son arrives on time. <laughs> if he comes early, I will be in trouble. Uh, but, you know, just that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, so I'm only going to... This week is actually crazy. I am doing a photo shoot on Friday. I've got a wedding in one place on Saturday and then a wedding on Sunday, uh, four hours away. So I'm going to have uh, a heck of a weekend. Um, so it's, I will be here for Thursday night stream, but, uh, Steven and Jeremy and whoever Steven decides to bring along, we'll, we'll probably cover, uh, the rest of the stream. Probably hit some outriders this week. That would be a great, uh, stream. To, to see you guys going through all right maybe we can team up team up with friendly fire games we haven't teamed up with friendly fire games in a long time yeah. andrew's the only one that has it but well, he would love to do you know it. he would be he still counts he still counts yeah. as part of it so um anyway yeah so that's going to be the uh, the streaming schedule for this week uh let's hope you stick around again go watch the uh it takes two streams if you want to catch up on that. We also did Monster Hunter. So if you liked our conversation about Monster Hunter, you can go yeah, check watch that out. Watch Monster too. Hunter if you want to see us play Monster Hunter. Watch It Takes Two if you want to see us kill it. the cutest <laughs> stuffed animal you've ever seen. Oh, that was the second stream. That was horrible. That was rough. That was a rough time there. I hate not, this game. I hate my, it. Not my favorite thing I've ever done it in a video game. I like myself. <laughs> It's pretty rough. It was pretty rough. Uh, but anyway, that's going to do it for our show today. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Hey, come over here. here. I'm going to end the stream with a, with an emote. Okay. Where are you? Um, I'm coming to you. Oh, do you have it? Do you I have, have it? it? Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. I'm so excited. Where are you? I'm right here. I'm right here. We're about oh, to get a double shoot that guy, dose. Shoot that guy. We're about to get a double. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to get a double dose of. I'm uh, glitched. Uh, for everyone at home, I don't suck at this game. I'm glitched to where my health bar is that of a level one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one guy over there in the corner. All right, last try, okay. last try. One more try. Here we go. Pizza there's, dog. There's the boy. I love his little eye patch. Yeah. Such a sweet dog. Such a sweet dog. All right, folks, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.